Welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna show how to record the journal entry to reduce inventory associated with valuation changes for non-cancelable purchase commitments. Let's get started. Okay, so Waterway Commodities Company signed a long-term non-cancelable purchase commitment with a major vegetable supplier to purchase produce in 2021 at a cost of $598,000. At the end of 2020, the produce to be purchased had a market value of $508,200. So that market value at the end of the end of 2020 is lower than what they have what they have to pay for it. So that value went down. There is a loss associated with this non-cancelable purchase commitment, and they need so they need to recognize that loss when it occurs, which is in 2020. So need to recognize that loss so on uh december 31st we are going to recognize a loss of, of our in our inventory and we are going to call that we're going to debit on on my keyboard the right in front of me unrealized holding gain or loss on purchase commitments pardon my spelling and this is going to be for the difference between the committed purchase price and the current market price which is going to be the current the commitment price is $598,000 the market price is $538,000 which means uh, that's not right. 538,200. There we go. 59,800 is our loss. Now we have not we have recognized a loss, but we have not actually paid for this yet. So we need to actually record a credit to estimated liability on per purchase commitments the same amount of $59,800. Okay. So there is the recording the loss. Now let's let's make some let's make some additional assumptions. Let's say at the end of January the price actually went back up by $25,000. So instead of it being 538,200, it was now $25,000 on top of that would be 500 and oh 52,200. So what we're going to do here is now we're basically going to reverse this entry. Now, until we actually acquire the inventory, we get to recognize gains and losses associated with the valuation change. Once we buy the inventory, whatever value we bought it for, that is our cost of the inventory. But until then, this is a financial instrument. These are gains and losses associated with the financial instrument. So if the value goes up, we get to recognize that increase in our value right up until we take possession of the inventory. So we are going to reverse this. So instead of crediting the liability, we are actually going to debit the liability um, for the $25,000 increase. And then instead of debiting the unrealized holding gain, we are going to credit the unrealized holding gain again for the $25,000. Now, let's say um, on June 30th, we are going to purchase, or let's just say purchase slash take delivery of the inventory. Now, the question is, as of this point in time, the value of our inventory, or let's say our commitment, I'll just call this market value of the inventory, is actually... The, let's say we're going to say it was five hundred and ninety-eight thousand dollars. Then it went down by fifty-nine eight hundred, and then it went up by twenty-five thousand dollars. So the ending value of that inventory is actually oh go away. I don't want you there. 
$563,200. So there is the market value of our inventory. So that is the market value, the original contract price minus our initial reduction, add back our value increase of 25,000 gives us an ending value of $563,200. So when we take delivery of this, we actually get to have our purchases were new periodic system of $563,200. That's the inventory value we get. We, we took possession. This was this is now our cost for that piece of inventory or those whatever vegetables in this case, I guess. So we purchased the inventory. Now, in conjunction with the purchase of the inventory, we're actually going to get rid of our estimated liability on purchase purchase commitments which is that is the $59,000 minus the $25,000 of $34,800 and we are going to debt or credit accounts payable or whatever however we're paying for this we're I'm presuming it's a credit to accounts payable and that is just going to be for the total amount of the purchase commitment which was $598,000 and that should balance $598,000 $598,000 so note when we actually Take possession of the inventory. The only amount the, it is the fair market value of that inventory that comes onto our books. And any losses that occur prior to us taking delivery, we have to recognize at the time of the loss. We don't wait until we buy it. Alternatively, let's let's assume we had never made this these two entries up here. Now, when we took delivery on June 30th, we would have actually had to record a loss because or well. We bought we now have inventory that we essentially overpaid for so the question then is well we don't bring it in well we can't we're not going to bring it in at more than the value of the inventory so we need to then record a loss well we're not going to we're recording a loss in june of 2021 and a big chunk of that loss actually occurred last year and we knew about it last year so we're going to recognize that loss last year when it occurred not wait until we took delivery of it to recognize the loss then that is the rationale behind uh, how we account for non-cancelable purchase commitments. Okay. So that pretty much wraps up our discussion on accounting for the valuation changes in the inventory underlying uh, non-cancelable purchase commitments. With that, have a great day and God bless.